Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And we have a guest today. And I'm Dylan Fletcher. There you go. Dylan, Dylan welcome to the show. Let's talk about Dylan. He reached out what? to me and said, like for weeks now, I feel like, I got to tell you guys a caving story. I got to tell you guys a caving story. You're going to wish you heard this story. So here we I, are. Okay. Is there anything else about like, but, Dylan's yeah. in the okay. house? Well, okay. <laughs> let, me, let me tell the quick story of how I met Dylan. Okay. All right. Thanks. So Something. I was a huge fan, still I am a huge fan, of a TV show called Top Shot. It was in History Channel. Awesome show. I wish they would bring it back. And Dylan was a contestant on season four. FBI specialist, an IT guy, a knife maker. Nice. Did you win? No. Okay. Well, what was the contest? I won by being there. And really, really, really fast, just like in five words, what was the contest? Uh, well, they, they get uh, the top shooters in the world together and uh, have a shooting competition wow. that lasts over several weeks it's actually months that it takes to film and a lot of people don't know that wow and um yeah you're gone for like at least a month and a half uh two months to film this thing and uh i mean it's it's hollywood production stuff like i've done a lot of tv stuff this was definitely like the most hollywood production-y that there was um they really wanted some drama that was it was kind of a shame because the first two seasons of the show were way better than the season that i was on and it was because at the end of season two they were like you know this is almost too good we need to find a way to like really uh cw this up and like get the drama out here and so then they started like pushing all these like weird little drama aspects of the show and it, it got kind of crazy but what's, what was funny is that I had only seen the first two seasons, mm. and by the time I was cast for season four and I was out there filming it, that's when they aired season three is when I was gone. Dude, so I came three home. Was amazing. I came home to everybody being like, did you did you watch season three? And I was like, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to see it yet. And they said, oh, it's, uh, cool. it's, it's uh, lots of drama, lots of drama. I yeah. will. Yeah, we I, uh, I actually... <laughs> I actually watched uh, season three, and season three was like it was a uh, it was very interesting. I got to meet Dustin it Ellerman, was a by the good way. Good show. Yeah, Dustin is, is a cool guy. I, I like him a lot. Uh, the winner of season three, but anyway, he was in season four, and during the show, I don't know what episode or whatever, but I think you were competing against somebody, and you said like, "I can't believe I'm competing against this guy. He's like a world champion." And I'm just some knife making dummy from Atlanta. And when you said that, I'm like, oh, wait, did he give you a knife? No. I'm like, I'm going to look this guy up. <laughs> no, I thought, I kind of, I Are thought. Are we starting this already? Didn't I didn't know that from... I was going to start getting asked well, no. for a knife yet. <laughs> no, but I'm like, this guy oh, makes amazing liver? knives. So I, I got one. Um, the Ulysses, I think it was the first one I got, which I love. It's my favorite one. I like the way that you pronounce it. Oh, that's yeah? that's how Ulysses it should have been. Or whatever U it is. Ulysses. Okay, there you go. From U Ulysses, well, originally it was right. Ulysses S. Grant, and then it's actually the guy who I designed that name, that knife for. That's his middle name is Ulysses. Dude, it's it's. But amazing. you say it way cooler, Ulysses. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, yeah, go ahead. I then I went to Blade Show and I got to hang out with them in person, and then when I started showing his knives on Dive Talk, I gave him a shout out, and then he started watching Dive Talk. Nice. So, so then this is like full circle. Now he's on the show. Perfect. Yeah, this man. is wild. It's well, amazing. I'll tell you what. <laughs> if you ever, you know, have a knife that you don't want, here's what I'll do for you. I've never right heard this now, before. Right by the now, way, I will let you wear. <laughs> oh I will let God. you wear, not keep. You look cold. <laughs> not keep. <laughs> oh no! You look I'm, so cold. I'm right chubby. Now. I'm very warm. You're in short sleeves. <laughs> very, sleep. very I mean, warm. If you get cold. Is, I have long sleeves. Wear on. This. I can pull it down. Okay, but if you do get caught, don't you get me wear wrong. I, the pink is really speaking to me. I but, know. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I would let you wear it, uh, but okay, I'll keep it in mind. I'll keep it in mind. Think about that. All right, let's roll into this because that was a long, well, but introduction. It's, it's important, and, it, and I want to get into what we're here for. Which there's. By the way, if anybody watches Top there, Shot season four, and it is actually airing on several places all the time, if anybody watches it, please keep in mind. You're watching a TV show that was produced to keep people's attention about material that only really gun guys liked. And then, so they had, they had to make it appeal to everybody. There's attitudes and stuff in that show that don't necessarily represent real life. 
So just keep that in mind. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> always the case. But now let's talk about you're also a diver. No, no, no. no this isn't. Oh, you're I not was, a diver? No, no. But you're on dive talk. You make knives and right. you're going to talk about. I'm almost as surprised you, as you. How, why are you? <laughs> why are you? Gus was here? like, we should record why, this. Why are you like, here? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not being rude, but wait a second. <laughs> nice guy. Talked about knives. Honestly, I really thought that this was going to launch my exotic acting career. There you Gus, go. Gus was like, a lot of people see this thing. I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? Somewhere there's a producer watching this who, who's <laughs> like, that's the guy that I need for this scene. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping for. This isn't oh even actually a cave. I was out playing with this anthill and we built this little mound. No. Um, no, it's not a diving thing. Although, it almost got into that. Uh, oh. I have been... I haven't been... Um, like any kind of deep diving I've done, you know, like when you go on vacation, you're going on cruise ships and stuff like that. I've done that kind of diving and uh, lots of snorkeling. I grew up around like Florida and stuff like that. We went to the beach all the time. This particular story, though, happens to take place in a mine. <laughs> yeah. We're going mine yeah. diving very shortly, Gus and I, by the way. Well, now listen, mine diving is a cave. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just want oh, to make yeah. sure everybody understands. Yeah. So I, I will say this. I will say this. Going by the cave um, checklist. Okay. There was no natural light at the point that I ended up in. I was partially submerged in water, but not all the way. And um, there should have been some sort of things in there to like help people find their way out. You think? Uh, <laughs> most definitely. So I'll, I'll go ahead and jump into it because I... I, don't, I, I know how things can drag on. Okay, you have to imagine, I'm remembering this from 30 plus years ago. I was 11 years old when this happened. And uh, I lived in this place. It's actually in Georgia. And um, this type of town, there's it's, it has very, very interesting geography. And it has very interesting um, rocks and stuff going on. And there's a lot of different kinds of minings that took place in this town a long 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 time ago and this house that we lived in when i show it to you on the map and i show you the area around it you'll see it's like nothing but mountains and forest around this this whole house and um everyone all the old timers would warn kids all the time watch where you're walking you could fall down an outhouse uh tunnel or yeah. you could accidentally fall down uh, a vent for a mine and so you always had to like watch where you were going and uh, I had this friend named Jason and we would go to his property and it was kind of like a central property. And all of us had like, I mean, this is hundreds and hundreds of acres of property. It's just totally untouched other than a couple of people that had like uh, houses and trailers and stuff out there. So we, me and Jason used to walk the property behind his house all the time. We would go up into these mountains and just explore. And this one particular time we came up on this thing that uh, you looked at it and at first you would say like, that's a really weird place where like some rocks had fallen from this like mountain face. Like that's, it's very strange. Why does that look like that? And it's because your brain is trying to figure out this is obviously a man-made thing. And so we get up closer to it and it looks like somebody had dumped like those giant chunks of granite or something like just huge rocks all at the opening of this tunnel. And they were almost to the top, but not quite there. And we, this is back in the days of every kid had those uh, tilted head flashlights from like the uh, um, army surplus store. Yeah. So this is what we had. I mean, this, you but watch a movie. No way, no way as a kid, I'm not going in there. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, I, dude, I remember dude. as a kid, I see that. I'm like, dude. We're in yeah. without any thought of any safety. Well, here's the whatsoever. thing. You you would hope that there would be some adult that would speak some sanity and say, don't you dare go in there. That's absolute death waiting for you. Mm -hmm. There was. Oh, <laughs> we found this place and we went back to Jason's house later on that day. I mean, you're talking, these are hours walks. So we hours later, we're back at Jason's house. His dad is home from work. And, um, we we told him we found this thing it, it looks like a cave it, and we were really thinking more like are there bears in, in there or something like we wanted to like find yogi bear or something and his dad said well there's a lot of mines in these mountains they were mining a lot of different things and um i mean it's like everything from gold to copper like everything 
that they could have been mining. Who okay. knows? And um, he said, whatever you do, do not go in there. It's an absolute death trap. You will die. There's no way you're not going to die. And, There's no way you're not going to die. Yeah. I mean, he, he was like, that thing, first of all, here's something that should have been the uh, like nail in the coffin of any idea of going in there. He said, that thing is flooded. And so we were like Dude, maybe we should go check it out it wasn't when we looked at it i mean that was like the only thing i was thinking was i, think I know where it, it is. wasn't all the way flooded th- stop it's yeah. on private property you you oh, might i, know I the mean general, somebody might have i know found the general it. area um so uh <laughs> of course like the next day jason's like you want you want to We're go going. look at that cave and i was Absolutely. like are you kidding me i was just waiting for you to say of something course. let's roll <laughs> so we go out there and uh, we got our little flashlights. We've got on like boots and stuff. So we climb over the rocks. We had to physically like climb through this gap and squeeze through it. And it was really hard to do because these rocks are huge, but they're really pointy everywhere. And so we're like climbing over. It was a long time just to climb over these rocks and like climb down into this thing. It was a tunnel that went down in an angle. It wasn't like super steep or anything. It was just a tunnel. And I can't tell you exactly how long it was from my 11 year old memory. It was like maybe 30 feet down this tunnel, but the rocks, once we got to the other side, I could see what had happened. And as an adult, like I've kind of figured it out over the years on the other side, you could see where the rocks had spilled all the way down the inside of the tunnel. And there were at the bottom of the rocks, it was filled in with all kinds of like dirt and Georgia clay and stuff. It probably was where people tried to seal this thing off right, and bury it so that no one would even see that there was an entrance there or anything. And over time, just the, the topography of this place, it was, it was in washes that came down. So every time it rained, this thing is trying to keep water out and water's trying to get in. And so, uh, so we climb over these things, we climb down in, we're walking down in this tunnel. We've got these stupid little flashlights. I hate that I even ever own those things. I'm like a flashlight snob now. I've got these super like four bazillion lumen things. And every time I watch a movie and there's people like going through the scary house and the flashlights barely turn on, I'm like, what are you people doing? That's clearly not even LED at this point. Like you're so old school. This is painful. That's what we had back then. So we're looking around. I can kind of see the inside of the walls and everything. You know, you can tell everything is man-made. We go all the way down into this and it opens up into a big room. And I can't see all of the walls to the room. We could have looked around and everything, but the main thing was it was full of water at the bottom all the way up to our knees. And, but we're standing on the floor. There's tons of silt. We're sinking into it and stuff, but it's full oh. of water. And, um, the silt didn't seem like it was much lower than the water level. I mean, it was like so deep. And, uh, we can see that at the back wall of this room, there's another thing where clearly there was rocks. So I tried to stop people from going in this thing that had become knocked down over, mm-hmm. you know, decades, whatever, probably what? teenagers who knew where it was. Well, just think about the rocks that you first climbed in, right? The ones that were pointy and stacked on top of each other. That was God saying, stop. You now. do understand <laughs> how easily any one of those slipped. Those rocks slip, right? Oh yeah, you're, could have it, broken my leg. I could have been trapped about right there. You're, you're still in that cave. Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> okay. absolutely. Yeah. So no, knowing no, that nobody now, do, we joked around. Let's go. I, you know, said no. That at the beginning. Yeah, definitely. Listen, this is terrible. <laughs> zero, zero chance of going. And I, in. what's funny is I, I looked at all of this area on Google Maps before I came over here. I was thinking about how I was going to show you guys what the area looked like and everything. The place where all this stuff is is still completely untouched. Ooh. So I know it's still there and people haven't found it because I can, I can look like right at, you would see some kind of clearing if someone had ever found it. Yeah. But it's so probably it's, completely flooded at this time, which is cool. Well, here's the crazy thing. Mm. So, uh, we climb in, we go to the, we go to the back wall. I'm not really taking like huge mental pictures of what's going on. Like we walked in one tunnel, we're in a big room. We're going to walk, we're going to climb over and go down the next tunnel. By now, we already have no light. Like once we were in that big open room, there's no natural light coming in at all. Totally dark other than our stupid little flashlight. Was it a maze of tunnels or was it just pretty clear that if you came back out one, you have to come back out the same one? As I get into this, you will understand that better. Because obviously you know what I'm getting into. Yes. Like we need a line always in a cave. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise. There should have been something like that here. And we'll, we'll definitely get there. 
You violated all of them. most Every of the single rules rule of cave diving yeah. so far. By the time this and is you done, just got in. <laughs> by the time this is done, we will have violated everything. All of them? I guarantee okay. you. All right. cool. And multiple laws. But now at this point, I have a partner. I do have a partner. I'm not in there by myself. So that's one rule that we have still maintained. Actually, so far. that's, oh, that's not even one of the main rules of cave diving. Funny enough, <laughs> is that we can <laughs> do our this. rule. That's it's your we, rule. We added it as a six yeah, rule. It's okay, a good so rule. You, so you good violated rule. that. You didn't violate our not add-on yet, rule. Not yet. I up. haven't done it yet. So <laughs> <laughs> we climb over that. the second boulders uh, for the second tunnel. We climb down in there. And it's another shaft that's, again, at, a, at an angle. And it keeps going down. And, again, opens up into a big room. And this is when I figured out what was going on with the water. Uh, this was, like, very obvious to me. At the bottom of that uh the doorway we'll call it for the second shaft that went down again you had all these rocks and you had dirt at the bottom filled in where someone originally had like tried to seal these tunnels wow so they're sealing every floor basically yeah they were it, huh. it, the ones that we saw this is what was done to it it's and there wasn't a lot of screaming stuff. Do not, under any circumstances, go any time. further or go in. And, of course, that's what you're One doing. thing that has occurred to me as an adult now, and especially since I've, like, looked more adult into... Is oh, man. Subjective. This subjective. I'm definitely using that term very loosely. <laughs> um, the... What was... It? Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the things um, that is very obvious now is that the dirt that was built up where they had tried to seal each tunnel, and there wasn't much stuff in there. They had taken, because you've seen mines where there's like, there's still um, like pipes and stuff run. And you'll still see wiring for lights. You'll still see, we had some wooden structure, but not much at all. And it looks like at some point they had figured out this mine isn't going to pay out. Mm. Um, let's just take all the stuff out and seal this whole thing up. Okay. And so it might've been then, or it could have been someone who owned that property in the subsequent hundred years that said, ah, to seal this up. Cause there's probably a couple of stupid little redneck kids going to come down here one day and <laughs> climb in this thing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we climb in, but what was holding the water in each room was where they had sealed this thing off. There was still a whole bunch of like stuff that was piling up against the rock. So every time water was filling this thing up, it was actually sealing itself and making pools. So we went down into the second thing, and again, this thing is full of water. It was actually much more full of water. This time it was up to our thighs, and the silt, I mean, was all the way at least up to our knees. And it, oh man, it smelled so bad. And everything was wet, and it was just disgusting. But it was amazing. It was so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and also, at this point, we're in water uh, with these stupid little flashlights that are in no way waterproof. Uh, they're using C cell batteries from the early eighties. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's nothing about these flashlights that are meant to be taken near water at all. Nothing. So we're looking around and we see this like stack of wood. It's almost like a, kind of like a portion of a wall that someone had built that was just leaned up against the wall. And that was really like the only thing that really stood out to me in this big room. And it just seemed like it was shaped kind of like a big rectangle. But next to that, you had two tunnels that kind of came together before they joined the room that headed off to our right. And then you had another tunnel that went off to the left and all of them stayed kind of at the same level. None of them were uh, below what we were. None of them were at a down downward angle. And all of those tunnels, none of those things had been rocked up. Hmm. And all of them were just as full of water as the thing that we were standing in. And so I said to Jason, well, we see where this, these pieces of wood are. Like, we just have to remember this was on our right coming in. Mm -hmm. And we'll remember it's on our <laughs> left coming out. Go. Yeah. Right. And we can find our way out. It's huh. not that hard. We have brains. Easy. So let's go down this right tunnel first. So we start walking down the right tunnel. We're walking down it for what seems like a really long time. It's probably just like a couple of minutes. But here is when things got interesting. When you're in this cave, this mine in particular, one thing that you guys said during one of your episodes really, really like, I had totally forgotten about this aspect of it until you guys said something. You talked about how dead silent it is when you're down in there in the cave. It almost bothers you if somebody talks. Mm -hmm. 
And so even like me and Jason down in there, we kind of like instinctually were almost whispering because it sounded deafening anytime somebody said something. Well, you can't hear anything that's going on outside. And we're in this cave and all of a sudden I can hear it kind of just, it just sounds, it sounds like something. It almost sounded like if you could imagine a snake swimming through the water, mm. it kind of sounds like that. And I started, I started saying to Jason, I think that there's something in here. Like, I think that there's like a snake, like a water moccasin or something. And he yeah. said, why are you saying that? And I said, I, I can hear it. I can hear it mm. like swimming. That's and he said, not good. I don't know that there's anything swimming and we're shining our flashlights around and we're like, dude, there's got to be like snakes in here. And I said, you can't hear what I'm hearing. It's just, it's just like the water's moving, but it's not like splashing. It's just, and it's definitely not us. We're standing totally still. Mm. And, uh, then I said, I'm really freaked out. I think that we need to leave. <laughs> and Jason says, okay. So we start walking out of the tunnel that we're in. And it's as we're making our way into what ha was the second chamber that we had walked into. The big room, yeah. That we see that there's definitely stuff. The water itself is moving. Because the water, like we could see all, all the like mud and stuff that we had stirred up. We could see it with our flashlights right there at the surface. And you can see it all moving. And it's all flowing in the same direction. And it is toward the direction that we just came out of. It's all flowing toward those tunnels at the back of the room. So and you can it's see It's basically it. what we call a siphon. Yeah. Right? So right? It's because all... if water's coming in and it's coming in from the exit, that's really dangerous when you're cave diving. Oh, right? yeah. Because you want it to be the other way. You want it to be a spring. So, okay. So, go ahead. So Sounds then, like it could be a little rainstorm. Okay. So, here's where it starts to get a little bit buck wild. So, if you remember when I was describing the way that this chamber comes in, and the second chamber and everything. So we get to the second chamber and I look to my left. I mean, just for a second, I look to my left. I see the wood sitting there. I'm like, okay, there's the wood. Like I know exactly where we are. And we're just looking at the water. I can't stop looking at the water and the water is definitely getting higher. Mm -hmm. And I, for some reason, probably cause I'm 11 years old and absolutely stupid. I'm standing there just looking at it going, wow, this is like really strange. And you, I could feel the current. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that's much stronger than I thought it would feel. And I'm, you know, I'm busy being amazed by how strange and amazing these things are. I have no clue. I'm getting ready to die. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden me and Jason kind of snap out of it. I'm like, dude, this thing is filling up with water. We have to get out of here right now. And so I put my flashlight up. I see the tunnel. I'm like, that's it. Let's go. So we start hauling, butt. we're, you know, trying to move as fast as we can in this water flashlights clipped right here on uh you know, we have like BDU shirts cause we think we're in the Marines or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, we're like wading through the water flashlights kind of going around all over the place. Can't see anything. We make our way up through this tunnel and this is another weird part. So as we get to the, the opening of the tunnel that goes up to the first chamber, now I know what's going on and I can see water all coming down the hill. It's just coming down this, this tunnel, this entrance. And I'm like, it's raining its butt off outside. Mm -hmm. And all of the typography out there is nothing but mountains that come down to just corners. And then all of this water is running down like, it's like that. a flash flood. Yeah. And the spot that we're in happens to be like in a thing where like all sides come down to this one point. Yeah. That's like the entrance to this cave. No, people have died in this type of situation. There's people many, probably many died stories. in that one. Well, That's, <laughs> that might be why this thing is sealed up. Well, I have no well, idea. Well, slot canyoneering out in Utah, the biggest risk is flash flooding. You have yeah. no warning. And then all of a sudden you're, you're, you're flooded inside of those slots. So yeah. Really I didn't dangerous. have quite the outdoor skills that I have now. <laughs> now I would have recognized I, that. And I'd have been like, first of all, we're not going in there. That's <laughs> ridiculous. All right, so, so keep on going. So you're watching uh, the water. Yeah. So we're watching the water. Like I see, and it's, it's coming down enough on the, the part that we're walking on, on the floor that there's like a visible amount of water it's not just like the floor is wet and you see like the mud kind of sliding down there's like a sheet of water running down this thing like a water slide mm -hmm. and now we can hear like thunder and stuff going on so it's obviously really storming outside 
in this area, it's not uncommon for just insane weather all the time because it's just the way that the geography is, it just happens. So I'm like, oh my God, you know, let's get out of here. We're running up this thing. We're trying to make our way. We keep slipping and falling. So we're in this room and then I'm looking for where the heck is the exit? Mm. Like we're in, we're in the room. We should see, like, we should at least be able to see daylight at the end of the tunnel. We should see something. And we don't. We don't see anything. And at this point, the flashlights, his flashlight is not working anymore. It's wet. It's dead. Mine is still working. And my flashlight, everywhere you shine it, you can see a spot that's like four feet wide. And the rest of your vision is just ruined. Because you're looking at something lit up and pitch black mm -hmm. and it makes you totally blind everything else. So we're looking, but we can only see the section of wall that this light is on. And both of us are starting to panic at this point. Here's where we're going to break your favorite rule. This is where Jason says, you go that way. I go that way. Uh, I'm going to walk to the other side of the wall and you walk to this side of the wall. And then w I'll feel, and you can look with your light and we'll try to figure this out. Now we have a procedure called a lost line procedure right. where we would tie off. So you always at least get back to where you started. You guys had absolutely zero plan whatsoever. And we're just going to go. Oh no, directions. we had a plan. It just wasn't a good one. <laughs> well, I'm going to call it not, it, not, not really a hundred percent. We had plan a, but a doesn't mean anything good. Yeah. It's, right. just, it's, a, it's just a random thought. Yeah. of Nothing that made sense. Okay. Yeah. The, 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 so you did violate problem solving so skills of rules. an 11 year old. All six rules. Good job. Yes. So we separate. I thought maybe one of them was preserved, yeah. but all right. And literally our flashlights wow, are so, so bad that I'm watching him walk to the other side of this room and I'm watching him fade into nothingness because my flashlight can like barely reach him. And I'm not standing next to my wall yet. I'm just watching him walk away and I'm thinking we're going to die. <laughs> and because at this point, like I'm remembering everything I've ever heard about going like kids getting stuck in wells and like all kinds of stuff. I'm like this is exactly how it happens. We just did it. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm looking all over my wall. Well, then I say, dude, I'm not finding anything over here. And that's what I heard back. <sighs> Nothing. And I said, Jason, I'm not finding anything over here. You find anything on your side? And he doesn't say anything. I turn around and now I'm walking toward his wall with my flashlight. The whole way I'm going like, you know, back and forth looking I don't see Jason anywhere. Jason, to, not to my knowledge, has left this room and has gone back down the tunnel oh, that we left wow. to come in here. And he goes back down all the way to the bottom of that, to that second chamber room. And luckily I heard him say, hey, come back down the tunnel. And I was like, I mean, I could like barely hear him. It was really weird because now we're like really hearing the water. It's getting kind of loud in there. Mm-hmm. So I go back down the tunnel and then luckily Jason said, there's more than one tunnel. This is the one that we came in. So we went back to the pieces of wood that were up against the wall. And then we look and now I'm following that wall. Cause I remember that being really close to us when we came down and in there. So as we're following that wall, now I see the bottom of the tunnel and I looked and it, the wall that when we first came in kind of went back a little bit behind us that's where the other tunnel was that we didn't know about that went up to what probably at one point was an alternate exit mm -hmm. or an exploratory tunnel or something. That was the one that we had gone up trying to find our way out. And, uh, here's where it gets really, really awful. So by this point, you mean we haven't hit the awful point? No, yet? <laughs> no, we're okay. We're at the, we're at the point where if you're scared of getting an MRI, this is bad. It's about to get way worse. <laughs> so now we're, we're back down in, in this tunnel, but now the water level is so high that the entrance to the tunnel where we came in, the top of that is below the water now. Underwater. Wow. It's underwater. So we, wow. as we've been in there, because that second chamber, you remember I was saying, was already like up to our, our thighs, to our waist. And we were 11. So you're talking about the, the water only went up like a foot and a half. But it was over the span of, I mean, we're probably in there, you know, what, 40 minutes, something mm -hmm. like that. 
And so for an 11 year old, that's not like a huge jump. That's, that's a lot of water in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking at the water bubble as it comes into the room and we can see the thing. My flashlight is starting to blink because it's definitely wet at this point. And the water, you can see it coming from under the thing. That's the only way we even knew where this exit is at this point is you can see it coming under the thing and it's like bubbling and churning. Mm. And I said to Jason, we have to like go under that and swim out. Like if we stay in here, we're definitely going to die. There's no way we're going to die. And, and by as the way, soon that, as you go under, the light is over. And not oh yeah, we're done. And we're was toast. that, and was that swimming out against the current? Yes. Cause now the water is flowing in. <sighs> no fins, no what? mask. Now here's the good Nothing. part. Just now we couldn't see, hopefully, we couldn't see how low below the water this entrance had become. All we knew was that it was below the water line. Because once, mm -hmm. once you're there, you can't see anything. You can't nothing. Like you could put your hand just below the surface of the water; it doesn't Zero exist. Of course. Yeah, there's nothing there. And um, so at this, I mean, I, I was like, dude, we have to get out of here. We're gonna die. And he's at this point freaking out. And his plan was we could go back up into that other thing and stay there until the storm was over. And by his rationale, because it wasn't full of water when we went in, the water has to go somewhere. And so he would think that it would rainstorm for like a half hour and then eventually the water would drain out and we would just be able to walk back out. I, at this point, am in total survival mode. And I said, what if it doesn't stop raining? Like, what if it keeps going all night and we just get to slowly drown in this thing? I was like, I'm not doing that. And option A, die, or option B, die. Which one? Yeah, or did, I mean, you this, know is, that? this is awful. So, and, all right, so you're, you're here. So we, 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 we do know the alert. ending, by the way. He's here. <laughs> I didn't die. Yeah. So, uh, luckily, you know, we, we were like, let's get out of here. We, we got underneath the thing. It turns out that the, the top of that tunnel was actually like really close to the surface of the water. It had just gone oh, under the surface man. of the water when we started looking at it. Wow. So, I mean, all we did is we're under it for like a couple of seconds. Whoop. Now that couple of seconds Still. was really wild because that water right there felt like undertow at a beach, mm -hmm. like, but it wasn't at the bottom. It was like right at the top. All of the movement was like right there at the surface. Yeah. And so us trying to stay up high and trying to stay up where we would have air the fastest. Yeah. We're fighting the strongest water coming into this stupid tunnel. Unbelievable, man. And so we wow. climbed out. We made our way all the way out of there. And um, uh, we we get back to Jason's house. And we're completely ruined. I mean, covered yeah. in water, mud, disgust. We smell like a foot that has been stuck in a butt. Like it was the most nasty smell. Are you, are you um, obviously still friends with Jason? No. No, I'm not. You've lost contact with Jason. Yeah, I, we I touched base with him like once uh, several years ago, and he's just we're both such different people. But do you think he'll see this? And uh, he might remember it and be like, I don't Man, think that he'll remember that, it. We'll the bring same way. Jason for a rebuttal. No, because just what I'm saying is I don't want to, not a rebuttal. Stuff. What I, what I'm saying <laughs> is when you share an experience like that with with another little kid, because I've had something similar as it related to accidentally starting one of the biggest fires in south florida <laughs> oh, God. it wasn't my fault i mean i thought we put it out but anyway you <sighs> never i'm 57 and this guy who we did it with is 55 and we did that when we were like eight and we still talk about that oh i know jason i can give you his side of the story right now the main differences you're gonna see are it's all gonna start with well dylan had this really dumb idea and then <laughs> i came up with the plan of how we were gonna okay. get out it's His way definitely going to keep him gonna be safe. I, I usually take most of the blame in the story anyway. Like, I'm like, you know, I could have at any point said this is dumb, but I was a stupid kid and I wanted to go and think. I mean, we went into like sewer tunnels and stuff. Like, so, we were oh, stupid. Yeah, totally. so to, to, yeah. <laughs> as, you, as you went back to whatever the house or wherever the dad was that told you don't even think about it, you're smelly, nasty, muddy. Did you disclose this to anybody other than each other? Because sometimes kids are like, we will never say what. Really oh happened. no, absolutely not. Well, uh, that's what, typical. Here, here's no something chance really to funny. Tell anybody this. Here's something really funny. So I the other it, night, the other night, I'm having dinner with my parents. We have dinner uh, at least once a week. So me and my wife, my son are sitting there. We're having dinner with my parents, and uh, I was telling my dad, I was like, "Yeah, you remember Gus? You met him at Blade Show. You know, he came and had dinner with us and stuff like that." And uh, my dad was like, "No, I don't remember him." I said, "Okay, well, he's the one who's got that dive talk thing that I've been watching on YouTube." 
And uh, I said, yeah, I'm going to go beyond it in a couple of days. And he said, why the hell are you going over there? You don't die. And I was like, well, you know, I've got this story. Dad? And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, Whoops. oh, man, what's the statute of limitations on this? <laughs> like, can I still get I in know. trouble? I'm I'm in my 40s now, and there's still things where I have to go over it in my head. Like, did they already know about that, or is this something like Well, I just admitted that <laughs> just now for the first time, oh, that, yeah. that, that accidental. Dude. Yeah, so I had to tell my Didn't dad hurt what anybody, happened. anybody, but I'm just saying, I was there. How many millions of dollars in damages do you cost? No, no, no. No <laughs> structures. It was. It, we used to call it the fields. The field. It was just fields, but it started golf, to approach it started to approach the people's backyards. So I remember as a little kid, they're hosing. They're hosing like the fire a lot. And I was like, yeah, man, I don't know, you know, because my dad always knew that we kind of sort of like to play with Fire? fire and he was like oh my god woody were you involved no <laughs> anyway you know how it is i was just looking at you look at like the cameras and stuff and i'm looking at gus look at the camera and i just realized i'm gonna be the only one that looks absolutely crazy because i've been looking at the computer screen. i'm looking at you guys on this screen i'm talking to you two because this you know, is kind you know, of uncomfortable you're at, but but you're actually a, not a lot Amateur. of people are no you're actually a very good storyteller no Listen, you want to know something awful and, and the re, let me I'm just not an it. amateur i do let, this for a living oh well. i make youtube videos as my job okay that's because, right because what i, I was haven't talked say is, about because this is your channel a no, lot of no, a lot, we'll, a we'll, lot we'll, of people <laughs> a lot of people cannot vib tell a story with vivid details where you paint i can can't you guys out there visualize Walking in the stacks of the rock, you can visualize the water and the smell and the wood on the wall. Like, you did it in a way where I could I could see. Keep in mind, though, I was like two and a half feet tall. All of these things, like all of these measurements could have been totally different. Yeah, <laughs> like, but it was very different. My idea, I've seen my house from when I lived in Tampa, and I'm like, wow, were we poor? I remember this being <laughs> huge. This is insane. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, but I'm, anyway, I'm trying my best to remember that. Wow. So would you say we always like to leave with a message that now that you over and over here are six rules of cave diving, they're, they're kind of like important. Well, one of the things that it's, it's hard to explain to people is the difference between you couch commandoing it, having never experienced that level of fear, and then you couch commandoing it, knowing how close you really came to die because you've watched a ton of dive talk videos now and you know how quick people can check out yep. from something as small as like, yeah. I'm, I looked left when I should have looked right. So I saw that. I should have seen this. Now I don't yeah. know how to get out. Yeah, it's really real. And lately, for some reason, Gus, I don't know if you know, we're getting a lot of comments or questions of, hey, I love dive talk. Can I start my dive training cave diving? Have you seen this yeah. lately? Oh, my goodness. Listen, no. <laughs> like not even remotely close it's really this real like like you're describing like it's that easy one little oh yeah and one little violation and you're you're done and it I doesn't seem dangerous that's what yeah. i'm sure yes. gets all of these people that have problems in Good caves point. and stuff yes is that they have a certain level of comfort built mm -hmm. just from having walked around and been a human for long enough. They're like, I know that I can go into a tunnel and get back out. Find my it way seems out. like I sh it's, I'm not going that far. Such I'm going like point. what? 10 feet. I should be able to go. But what you don't get, what people have such a hard time. It's very few people in the world who ever really experience absolute darkness. Yes. When you get to the point where you are no flashlight, when you are totally blind, yes. when there's literally no way to see, your brain does a totally different thing when it's the first times you've experienced this. Like you're, you instantly are like, I can't breathe. Like this is so dark and I can't, you start thinking about, I can't feel anything. Nothing feels like I think it's supposed to feel like your senses start going stupid. And I can only imagine some of these stories I've seen on you guys' channel you know, some of these dudes where they have something that started out totally normal and they're trying to keep their cool. And then you say, and then it was silted out. And then the person had zero visibility. And I just know what that's like, just knowing what that's like to not be able to see anything. And in order to not die, you have to somehow complete a task. And remember now you're yeah. adding the aspect of you are underwater. Oh, so you have a, petrifying. not only do you have all of the things that you just described perfectly, but you have, there's only so much time.
that you can be underwater and have the ability to breathe. Yeah. And I'm not just going to die in some easy way. I'm going to die in like one of the most painful ways that there is. But is, but, (laughs) but with that said, is cave diving awesome? Like, I know we're going to go, well, why do you guys do it? Why do you guys do it? Listen, it's unbelievably awesome because we practice these rules every single time. And you are seeing things that nobody else has ever seen. Of course, it's attractive and you want to go in and see it. But, you know, there's, it's something to say, isn't it, about developing skills and then wanting to use them the right oh, yeah. way, especially to visit places that are not seen by very many people in the world. It's hard to really describe the feeling internal, the, if you will, the adrenaline rush and the high you get from that, mm-hmm. but it's extremely dangerous to do it the wrong way. Yeah. And that's, that's the why I guarantee you right now, if I ask us, you want to go cave diving this yes. weekend, right? Of course. Yes. Absolutely. So, yeah, it would wow. be a big fat. No, I, love the- <laughs> <laughs> I-, I watch you all the stuff that you guys do and the cave diving stuff is amazing to me. Like I could see how you could get in there and some of the stuff that you're seeing I've experienced a lot of what you talk about of seeing things that no one else in the world is ever going to get to see. And just knowing that that's the case. And you think about the beauty in something like that, that's never touched by humans stuff. I imagine is like a very overwhelming experience, especially like the first hundred times that you do it, where you get into like the crystal caves, watching that stuff is mind blowing, mind blowing at the same time. I have no desire at this moment (laughs) to attempt something like that because I know how much training is involved and I would love to go diving. Like I love, I like swimming around. I like fish, you know, I love checking out reefs and stuff like that. And, um, I especially like doing it places where there aren't other people. And the more you try to get to something like that, where it's more you getting to have this experience and not share it, the more training is needed. And, uh, I, cave diving is one of those things i'm wondering like how many different aspects of phobia i could get through before i finally hit the wall and i was like no i choked on water one half second and now i'm done but do remember that when you are talking about cave diving at the level that you're at right now which is not even a diver no, it not seems at all. It, it seems like <laughs> I can like hold my water. My it, hold my water. I can hold my breath. Right. H- hang with me one second. It seems like, okay, it's such a high point because you're not even at the beginning level yet. Does that make sense? But if Yeah, I'm were, a Nobel. If you were an experienced <laughs> diver, then reaching that next level of training, which would be a cavern, it's not such a far gap. So you're not really taking this step of like in your mind right now to ever get to cave diving. You're taking little, little steps along the way, which is why the experience is critical so that that next step up doesn't seem like such a giant jump. And, and that, every step is challenging. Every step's challenging, but yeah. it's not from ground zero to the top of Mount Everest, which is what right. somebody that's not a diver right now would be like. That's what they're envisioning. Does that make sense? Well, and if they're smart, they realize that you have to do the time and you have to put all the effort and training in. I mean, that's like learning martial arts or anything else. That's right. Every step you get to before you're ready to do the thing, you have what they say. You have enough knowledge to get your ass kicked. Like that's as as good as it can get. And so, yeah, I mean, I I love watching this stuff. I hope that one day... I get to experience stuff like that, but I'm, de- I'm all about the baby steps. I've, I've done enough stupid things in my life and I've done enough cool things that took a lot of training that I've, I figured out like you, you really have to get the training. I, mean, I so watch these people say said. these things where they're like, Oh, you know, have you guys thought about taking an experience? Like I see him in the chat and I'm thinking, no. I want to say to this person, have you lost your mind? They don't. They <laughs> like, don't. They don't. Have you understand. watched any of this? Cave divers react. Just right. go to that list. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's. But really, I get it. I get it. Really yeah. well said. No, you. You know, you. You kind of summarized our entire yeah. message. Of and the if show. you're a little kid and you see a hole in anything, don't try to fit in it. No, no man, that's super a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> but uh, Dylan, so now that we're you know wrapping up, you mentioned that you have a YouTube channel. I've watched some of your videos and it's hilarious. Oh man, you you do a really good job with some of these reviews and very entertaining. 
So what channel is that? We'll so link it below too. It's the Forsyth Gun and Pawn channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all you got to put in is Forsyth Gun and Pawn. Yeah. And um, the way that that channel started is a buddy of mine bought this pawn shop. And we're actually going to be doing these huge changes that I can't talk about. It's super secret stuff. Ooh. Lots of money changing hands. There's huge things going on. And when we started this YouTube channel... It started out, um, he was just taking over this gun store, and he was like, hey, man, you want to make some funny videos? It'll be a good time. And then I did it, and it brought in a lot of people, and he said, you want me to pay you to do that? And I was like, I don't know if I want to do it as a job. And then he said, well, here's how much I pay you. And I was like, I'll do it. I quit. <laughs> Whatever yeah, job I No day job. <laughs> yes. And uh, But at that point, he already had these plans for these big changes coming. And so the youtube channel really it's not like a placeholder i mean we still it's still a lot of fun yeah but there are things that are going to be there that's going to be more of a regular thing like two or three videos a week nice where it's going to be very informative stuff we're going to teach people everything from safety range etiquette how to handle certain types of firearms everything it's mostly going to be promoting safety that's awesome. we're going to have Good. cool stuff we blow things to pieces well, but right now that, that, that lets our youtube I don't know why channel you mentioned that but now i want to blow things i up. have the perfect By the way, thing do you know what you. i want to blow up <laughs> can you help me blow up the thing that i want to blow up which well is, it, as long uh, as it's not illegal ski. yes what? we can blow a jet ski to pieces well oh, I don't Gus, know. you didn't tell me we, we have access to so all now these we have... we have the proper licensing we can oh, blow up a jet ski. no no we can totally do this, this may oh. be the final best moment of any ending of a Oh, I, I, I mean, oh. uh, if you guys want to do, want to do oh. like a fun thing, you could have it, like when you guys had this thing where someone could come it? up with no, their own you episode. Don't hug it out, do you? Yeah, <laughs> like, dude. So this when, is when you guys had the idea for the episode, I had like a really great idea, and it's something I would totally be willing to do. But right. it was I didn't want to put it in there because it wasn't a diving thing, so I didn't want to mention it, and then other people uh, say something. Well, I, and Dylan also mentioned uh, when amazing. when we were reacting to the Chernobyl stuff. There's like a Chernobyl in Georgia. Oh yeah. So he yeah, was there's, like, there's a, a nuclear testing facility <laughs> for real? in, in Georgia. It's not very far from here. Yeah, but we sort well, of that's... both did agree that we're not really into diving in radioactive water. Well, you no, wouldn't no, be. You would, not even it was, particles. You could technically get in. I know that. I, I know I, I get way it. in. I'm and more it is submerged in, in the, water. But oh the, boy. But that you know how to make things go boom. Is that? I do. Active? Yes, very oh, much so. I blow boy. things up every day. Oh this is my. So, anyways. So my idea for this episode that I never ended up saying is uh, my family actually can, competes in cowboy action. Do you, are you familiar with that? With what action? Ca cowboy action shooting. I feel like yeah. I it's should a lot change like my three accent. Gun and can stuff. I change my accent right now yeah, while I'm talking for to you? Because it. it just feels more you, natural. You got to get insult a little a bunch of people. Go That's for not it. insulting. I'm saying no. they are yeah. experts. The people that talk like this I am are a experts. No, I'll get, experts. I'm a redneck. I'll give them a pass. <laughs> They're experts in the stuff we're talking about right now. Yeah, as right a matter of fact, now. it's just coming out without me thinking about it. All right, let's. Wow. So this, this idea I had. Yeah, up. let me let. Is, what's uh, your, all right, go ahead. So we not not only does my family do cowboy action. Uh, my mother happens to be the world champion. What? And oh, she n and not man. just uh, not just her age. Women, every woman in the world. My mother is the world champion and. She's the international black powder champion. She's two different like this world is... champions. What? And my, both of my parents are the state champions, not only in Georgia, but in all surrounding states because they travel to their state championships and win them. Are you, this is so I don't we know where have, this channel is going. Absolutely but, uh, amazing. So at, I know where it's going. We have a compound. Tell it's where I right film now. all the videos for Forsyth Gun and Pond. So Gus has probably seen it where we have an, an entire cowboy action stage set up. With I am steel a cowboy. targets that you can shoot. I am at heart. We a can cowboy. dress you up from head to toe in period correct clothing, oh real leather, everything. Dude, you're gonna guns, look like little Ness X. Everything. Like and and I can take Dude. you out there and I can show you how to do it and we can run you through a stage and see and it'll be totally safe. You know what's it, can I can do this. promise Gus, you everybody what's what's coming? Like coming we, soon we can to a town this. near you. This is <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, so but that's the channel. Dylan's channel is, below. Check him out. Oh, I, I brought something. I brought. Oh. I brought a couple things. Okay, because Woody, Woody. Oh my god, who's a cowboy? Where at is heart. this going? Oh, hold no, on. I am. This now I'm going to tell you ahead of time. None of this is gifts. To do this, and none of it's gifts. No, so okay. nobody, no, nobody go crazy. Not, not, well, not, I know. I know how Woody gets. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, so it seems like Gus gets 
gifts and sometimes well, here's the I first thing I've never now, gotten how come a you get three? now gus gus will dig this Patch this three uh gus are you familiar with the rat pack knives from no. essie no so before essie was essie it was rat cutlery oh and uh, a, uh there was a big group of us that were friends and uh you know with jeff and and mike and sean and all the guys that ran essie and um we have like done all kinds of events together and stuff and they came out with this one run of knives called the Rat Pack Knife. And everyone uh -huh. had a number. My number was 013-13, which is pretty cool. It's my wife's birthday. It's awesome. Nice. And um, so when they were coming up with all these knives, I was actually uh, helping Jeff and Mike and Sean people out with all kinds of other stuff, any way that I could help them. And as a gesture, they actually made me two of the exact same knife. Why? And so this particular uh, Rat Pack knife right here is wow. the orange G10 Rat wow. Pack knife. That's and awesome. And it's number 13. And this is the only one in the world where there is an identical Rat Pack knife that is serial number 13 at my house. It's wow. in a It's in a locked case. So this is the only knife where there's actually a duplicate in the whole world of any SE knife. It's wow. the only one where there's two with the exact same serial number. That's wow. amazing. So that thing is cool just because it has orange handles, and, and I know how Gus likes beautiful. that. Beautiful. No, yeah. no, so here's something I'll no show. Gift. No, no, Woody. no. Just you, always talk, your, you always talk about a pink like. knife. Oh, let me look this at this This is a company that makes the pink knife. It's also oh. from Essie. Let me hold it up, and then um, can you see that? Now, if what? you were to look at the serial number on it? the knife. It's pink knives. If you were to look at the serial number on that on that knife can you see it in the picture uh give me a second well it's a little dark so my eyes are uh dipping. it's very dark in let, me, here. let me turn on the light i'll save you my, some my, trouble my, my, my this is that knife it's the one that is oh, in that cool. picture let this me, is the one that they use okay now i see the serial for their number. marketing material what's the serial yeah. number on it i think it says like it's like 19 or something it could be zero 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 nine i think yeah i think it's nine wow let's see and i can't you shine your light and i'm only looking at you know at the uh at the knife there's nothing else in the picture that sure I, yeah the knife i believe you see there's a number okay here you thing. need that i can't even see where the number is i know it's i know it's on this thing right here somewhere it should be much easier where is it in the I'm picture me a pink knife. i don't even know where it is in the picture now <laughs> this is going down i downhill. just can't wait to oh there it is right there out. right there here it is so if you look at this that's the this is the exact knife that they used for all their marketing that's cool stuff. That's... they ended up giving me the one that they used for darn the that's amazing that's... so that thing is pretty but this is a that company is that makes a pink knife absolutely pink knife we're going to be company. cowboys and blowing stuff up so i was like that'll help it out and i do need you. to take some measurements of some stuff here that i won't i won't get anyone's hopes up yet but there's definitely wow Stuff. We're gonna blow stuff up. Everything and, um, else is. I had one thing. Partner. Just I. I know that Woody is really into um, cowboy being a cowboy. Small, delicate things, and so oh. I, I brought something for him to to hold in his hand. Yes. Oh my god. That is very small and delicate. I will say this: you do need to keep your grip on this. Okay. If this thing falls at any point, whatever it lands on, it goes through like a lightsaber. Dude. No, look at this thing. So, dude, look at this thing. This is a, the cowboy oh, knife. There you go. It's my. heavier than it looks. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm a, let me let me put it yes. under under so you got the camera, Gus. Oh, yeah, you always are goodness. here. <laughs> oh, I remember this now, knife. Gus. You need to give him like so much trash knife. about him holding up a big knife. <laughs> look at this guy. I'm saying it's a work oh, of man. art. Like, okay, yes. now do you understand look why that handle. thing exists now? I remember that knife. Look at the handle. Yeah. Now wow. holding it it's in your heavy. hand, you can understand how that can't be a weapon. It's no, only no, no, a piece no. of art. There's no way this could be a weapon. Yeah. But I mean, it's okay to admire. Did I just kick something over? Just because we're holding a Probably. knife up doesn't mean we're violent or promoting use. It just we're recognizing no, the art no, yeah. of making so this. I mean, anyone who's Gosh, like, oh, they're only made for it? like fighting, I'd be like, Have you yeah. Seen this? What about yeah, yeah, I, I, you know I'm, what else? I'm aware you know, of that knife. <laughs> I try, the handle. I try to buy it, and Dylan refused. The handle feels. I mean, this is solid. Like, yeah, really well made. I know that is beautiful, man. Yeah. I know that yeah, is I pretty special. Else. All of this file work is all done by hand. Yeah, that's my uh, people are talented. My company logo is that pin. 
Yeah, that's, so that's that's pretty fun. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a whole backpack of fun so stuff you, you made guys that, to play with. You made that completely. Yeah, so I mean everything st- except smelting the steel. So who does that? Who makes the actual blade? Oh, I made the blade. I just oh. it started out as a Blades giant everything. thick bar of steel. Oh, yeah. so, okay. Yeah, so you all to, of it. I have yeah. to wow. do everything else. Where do yeah. you do it? You have a factory? No, actually. Uh, <laughs> so I originally had a big shop with a buddy of mine, and then um, his business was uh not fun to be i I don't it's nothing (laughs) against him Mm. it's that some of like one of his employees in particular just really rubbed me the wrong way Mm. and also his business was taking kind of a different direction he was going to keep growing and keep growing i wanted to keep my knife making small like i like doing small batch stuff and so he started looking at a bigger bigger facility i mean at the time we were in a six thousand square foot place and so I'm paying for 6,000 square foot rent, 6,000 square foot electricity, and I'm taking up like 10 square feet. Okay. So I was yeah, like, yeah. when we move to the new place, you're going to move. I'm going to set up my own thing. So I actually <laughs> set it up at the place where we do the shooting. Um, that's Which where my we'll knife be, shop We'll is. be there. And by the yeah. way, this is a cowboy hat. So oh, Matt, my God. And okay. I didn't even this know is... you were going to mention cowboy, and I am one. <laughs> we're just dragging this. I was wearing no a cowboy hat without knowing. Look at no. what's on my cowboy hat. No. Look at that cowboy stuff right there. Can you see it? No. That. You look like a... Look at that. A, a, a 45-year-old lady attending the Kentucky Derby. That's, That's not... What you look like. I mean, this is a beauty, would you say? It would probably fit into the B-Western category. Okay. Which is... Well... Pretty nice. Whatever. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. I, it just happened that I was wearing a cowboy hat because I told you I am a cowboy. Mines are dangerous. Caves are dangerous. Stay away from them. Cuttlefish are aliens. No. That's, <laughs> especially they are. if it's dry caving. Octopus are. Like the video I'm going to drop right here. So you guys enjoy. Thank you, Dylan. Thanks for, for having stopping me. By. I appreciate Thank it. Thank y'all. Well, be the last one. That's, See you soon.